before you Jarko shippers run right to the comments after reading this video's title before even watching it and type a two paragraph long defensive statement of your favorite ship ever, I'd like to ask you something. Is your favorite pair really that great? I sure don't think so. At least not how it's handled by the show's writers. So let's start off with a little bit of analyzation. I'll be covering both how Marco and Jackie's relationship began as well as how it ended. Then I'll explain the problems with the ship and how we could fix it if we were in charge of the show's writing. So grab yourself a goblin dog, sit uncomfortably in your wooden chair, and prepare to absorb the knowledge into your brain cells. Oh, and there are spoilers! You've been warned. So we all know from the very beginning of Star vs. the Forces of Evil that Marco is totally into someone in his school. We also know that that person was, bear with me Starco shippers, Jackie Lynn Thomas. If you didn't know that, you clearly haven't watched the show and have no reason to be here. BE GONE SUCK! Unless it's a friend of yours forcing you to watch this with them. We all have those friends. At this time during the show's plot, Jackie isn't really into Marco yet. There are, however, moments throughout the first two seasons where she does seem more interested in him. In the episode Monster Arm, Marco grows, well, a monster arm. Jackie takes notice and actually wants to make physical contact with it, albeit revolting, like, what the heck man, I wouldn't even go near that thing. There was also that scene in Naysaya where Marco vents about his feelings to her, and Jackie wants him to watch a movie with her, as well as her friends, whoever those are. So now, let's discuss the build-up to their relationship. As Star vs. The Forces of Evil's plot progresses, we can see that Marco and Jackie start hanging out more, and this becomes increasingly prevalent with each episode starring them. In Sleepover, they, as well as several other companions, play some really messed up version of Truth or Dare, except there is no dare, called Truth or Punishment. Towards the end, Marco finally tells Jackie he's like totally obsessed with her. Yo, crush. Oh, Marco, you don't have- No. It's- it's fine. Uh, okay. My crush? My crush is on Jackie. They also go to that theater in a later episode, but I already explained that. It becomes more and more apparent that Jackie's into him. Oh boy. So then they're finally official in Bon Bon the Birthday Clown. They go to prom, it sucks, and Jackie asks Marco on a... on an actual date with her. They have some Jarko moments that night, the couple also go to a concert, totally not ripping off several times from Gravity Falls. And then we never really see them together until the episode that marks the end of the two, Sophomore Slump. Marco previously receives a <laughs> cape, and Jackie believes he's so obsessed with it that it will get in the way of their relationship. She wants to be able to hang out with him without any indication of his cape. Unfortunately, that doesn't go down very well after they... Free lobsters. And Jackie finds out Marco's been hiding a secret in his hoodie. She then tells him he should go back to Muni and rides away on her skateboard, thus confirming their breakup. So that's the end of it. As heartfelt and beautiful some of the scenes featuring them were, their whole relationship did not feel satisfying. Jarko could have been better. When they were official, we didn't get enough time with them as a couple at all. This also means their relationship fell very short lengthwise, creating a breakup scene that felt so sudden. It just makes you wonder if the show's writers rushed it to open up a myriad of new ships for the third season, which it definitely did. Basically, Jarko felt very shallow and underdeveloped. Now that we have all that out of the way, how could we make this ship better? More episodes involving them for sure. But not just of Jarko being Jarko, more like plots that add more complexity to their relationship, as well as more personality and depth to the characters themselves. Perhaps they could have some conflicts going on between them, 
When they broke up, it felt like it was for just one reason, Marco's Kate. If they had more conflict than just that, their breakup would make more sense. Although Jackie did have a good point about his obsession getting in the way, I don't believe that alone could justify this. Or maybe I'm just overanalyzing an animated television show on Disney XD centered mostly around a girl whose last name is literally Butterfly. Well, what's this? You want more ship-related Star vs. the Forces of Evil videos? Well, maybe that'll happen if you give this video a like and subscribe to the Star vs. the Forces of Evil fanbase channel. If you're still a hardcore Jarko shipper after watching this video and have no one to fangirl with, join the Star vs. the Forces of Evil Amino. It's a wonderful community for fans of the show. Go on, do it! Go nuts! Or not, I can't tell you how to live your life.